Now, let's break this down. Because y'all said, man, you got to tell us what's going on with Giannis and James Harden. Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak, and James Harden, the beer, the beef. And why is this good for the sport? Wow. You know what? This is the part that I hate. Because I'm here to tell you this goes a long way back. Now, back in 2014, when Giannis was a rookie, nobody was really paying attention to him. You know, and he was like, oh, he's a nice guy. You know, he's a young kid. He's learning. You know, he's from Greece. You know, it's like, okay. Nobody had nothing bad to say about Giannis. Or he was just playing hard, trying to make his way in the league. In a short time, he became one of the most exciting players in the game. And everybody kept saying, man, when he gets a jump shot, oh, he's going to be dangerous. And this guy gets a jump shot. Well, this is his sixth season, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And James Harden has been here for a while. He's been a great player for a very long time. And... I'm here to tell you guys the truth. That's why you come here. Everyone's going to sugarcoat this. They're going to show every instance in which they might have bumped each other, said something to each other on a basketball court. But you come here for the truth. And the truth is this. This is a beef that was created by the National Basketball Association. And I trust the people that entrusted this information with me. And they said the NBA created this beef on purpose. They did it. They need for people to care if they're going to move Giannis up into the ranks. Someone has to be the good guy. Someone has to be the bad guy. And James Harden has to be the villain. They painted him to be the villain of the NBA. So Giannis is, can't be a villain. He's too much of a good guy. So only when he plays against LeBron James, that's when you have LeBron playing the anti-hero or Giannis is being the hero. And it just doesn't have that kick. But with James Harden versus Giannis, now we got something to build off of for the future. So let's try to kick this rivalry off. Now, Giannis, I won't say he's dumb. He's not dumb. He just doesn't get American society sometimes he tries but he just don't quite get it he doesn't understand the politics around the things that are happening and it's always been in play even last year for the most valuable player award which it came out full circle after james harden had probably one of the best years we've seen since kobe went off and didn't get mvp so they said, well, if Kobe did all that and didn't get it, we can't give it to James either. But James was doing it in rebounds, assists, career highs, period. And he didn't get MVP. They gave it to Giannis. James Harden didn't even show up to the presentation. 
He was because he was already told he wasn't getting it. So Giannis showed up because he was receiving the award. James didn't show because he knew he wasn't getting it. So he did an interview at a radio station, I believe in Houston, where they asked James, James, I, I thought for sure you would be MVP. And he was like, man, they, it seemed political, man. He was like, yeah, it's political. He was like, you know, I believe it's based and determined on what someone make about you to predetermine. And that becomes the staple of what people believe about you. And it stays with you, and that narrative stays with you for the entire season. And it's not based on your performance. The NBA was not happy about this interview. Because once you say, when you have an NBA player that comes out and says, the NBA is being political about a decision that was made. You're almost saying it's rigged. And when an NFL, I mean, NBA player, someone on their umbrella says that, now you really ruffled their feathers. And Giannis was like, when they played, it was like, he didn't congratulate me or say anything. Like, I don't care. You know, I just play the game. and You know, it is what it is. They, they said I'm the most valuable player. If he would have won, I would have said, hey, congratulations. But, hey, everyone's different. So, he don't care. Now comes this draft. <laughs> team Giannis versus Team LeBron. Right? Let's get into that. Team Giannis, Team LeBron, Team Giannis, Team LeBron. Let's talk about that for a minute. Now. During the draft, when he decided to take Kimball Walker, Charles Barkley suggested, You don't want the dribbler? Huh? You don't want the dribbler? Meaning James Harden. Why did Charles single out James? Why did... Why did he single out James Harden? Anybody know? Why was James single? Because they knew about the interview and everything else. They were putting in the plugs. They are hooking you up to the cables, jacking you up, knowing that he was not going to pick James Harden on his team. They knew that. They knew. They've been planting those seeds. James Harden don't like you because you won his MVP. They've been planting those seeds in Giannis' head. So when Giannis said, I want someone that will actually pass the ball, so, once he said that, he thought, I'm joking, because that's the narrative, James Harden. Dribbles, he don't pass. And right away, LeBron don't want to laugh, because he knows he's been in this situation before. He's just sitting there smiling on the show, but he's not saying anything. Because he knows he's going to have James on his team. Now, Giannis has always stated I don't like to play with superstars or practice with them because I'm trying to beat those guys. So I don't want to practice with them. I don't want to go and be buddy-buddy. and He don't want that. So his team was picked basically on the guys that weren't the, looked at as the main superstars. LeBron, you can have all the superstars. I'll play with the guys I got here, which is why he likes playing with the Bucks. He's the only super superstar on the team. Everybody else, role players. He's cool with that. He's winning with that. So he might be on to something. But let's stay on point. 
So after this was done, the All-Star Game takes place. Everyone's glued in watching to see what happens with Harden and Giannis. Harden's just playing the game. So is Giannis. Giannis hit him with an elbow or something in the clinch. And it was incidental. Then they went and did a flashback of when Giannis hit him with a basketball accidentally. And he went to tell him my bad and all this. And, you know, because he didn't try to hit him in the head with the basketball. That play from years ago came back up in a conversation. It didn't mean nothing to James. James didn't it's like, all right, I'm going to get him next time. James, was, I wish I would have saw it so I would have got out of the way. You know, like, I don't need him to say he's sorry for that. No one thought anything of it. So when this All-Star game comes around, the NBA is already planting the seeds. They're already planting them. Putting them in your brain and letting them fest. Now, after the game, they interviewed Giannis, and he's saying, well, our strategy was anybody who was guarding James Harden, go after him. So James Harden just had enough. And just in the interview, he was like, well, first of all, um, I average more assists than, than uh, what's his name, from uh, Kimball Walker from the Celtics. He averaged more assists than him. He scores more than him. <laughs> Average more rebounds and assists, actually. I mean, it's no knock on Kimball Walker, but Kimball Walker is not James Harden. You know, James Harden not only led the league in scoring, he also led the league in assists. People seem to forget this. So you're talking about a guy who was averaging in the high 30s and leading the league in assists at the same time. When you mention James Harden, you talking about Kobe, Jordan. You're looking at guys in that scoring realm. But he's also giving you the assists to go with it. So they always say James don't play defense. James Harden does play defense at times. They just highlight the times he don't. LeBron James, who never plays defense, now they want to try to focus on him playing defense. When last year, a player had to push him to go play defense. I don't remember nobody having to push Kobe to play. But yet and still, that guy gets nothing but great press. But James, he's villainized. Because he's not going to play the politics. He's not going to do the song and dance. So the NBA is not going to waste time trying to promote James Harden and to propel him to NBA final status quo unless he has an angle unless they have an angle they could build on so if the Rockets ever make it to the NBA finals there's some tension there between him and Giannis so now the NBA has force fed this so-called quote unquote beef between him and Giannis and it's fake. Like he says, I don't know what the joke is. He don't know what the joke is. What is the joke? <laughs> Why is everybody laughing? Like, do you not know I led the league in assists? I average more assists than this guy? <laughs> so what's the joke? You know, it's just like, look, like he said, I wish I was seven feet and could just dunk. That don't take no skill at all. I actually have to learn, had to learn skill. I'll take that any day of the week. So.
So, that's how you feel about it. Well, I think it was a double shot. It was a shot at Shaq, too. Because that was Shaquille O'Neal's career. All he did was dunk. And it's like, dude, if all you're doing is dunking a basketball, being seven feet and dunking a basketball, what skill is that? <laughs> How can we say you're the greatest of all time and all you did was dunk? You had no moves. Now, Now that you know that this whole beef has been fabricated by the fabrics of the NBA, do you think they'll make a feud between Luka and, let's say, Jokic? Hmm? No, they would never do that. Luka Donage versus LeBron, the feud. No, won't happen. You never see it. So the whole thing is this. The NBA controls the narratives of what they want to promote. LeBron versus Ka Kawhi. Kawhi has a personality of silence. He has two NBA commercials out, I mean two commercials out with his new balance. And he hasn't said a word in either one of them. Which tells you what? Tells you what? Hmm? Tells you what? He's not very marketable as far as talking but he's shown you he's very marketable because he wins and he's good so of course he's gonna be written off as the nemesis LeBron will be the hero so the Clippers are villains the Lakers are heroes but you can't stick those two in the NBA Finals so your Western Conference is basically it and you lose when you go to your NBA Finals because you're looking at Giannis versus LeBron, and you're like, well, Giannis can't be the bad guy. He's our goody two-shoes guy. And now we got another goody two-shoes in LeBron. So now it's like a friendly battle that we're going to lose in the end. So that's going to be your series? Nah. You need that villain to be in there. Your villains, your clippers. To go against your new shining star, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Use LeBron to get to the Western Conference Finals. Then cash the bum out. And then you move in the Clippers. But if the Houston Rockets go, ooh, do you got a story to tell. Oh, ESPN got stories to write. Don't they? All of it's false. Fake and false and everything else. But they're going to keep promoting it. They're going to make story after story. They're going to show a clip and a highlight. And Giannis is going to be biting at the bits. And throwing stuff out. And saying things he shouldn't say. And they're going to react to it. Welcome to the National Basketball Association, ladies and gentlemen. So, with that being said, it's your boy Carcino. I'm out. Don't forget to support the page by hitting up my cash app, which is Carcino, K-A-R-C-E-N-O. And for everybody else, thank you dearly for all the support. We have been crushing it. The Carcino for Life podcast will resume today. And we're on.